hey what's up guys today in this video i am going to show you how i created the entire user and login mechanism because if you have seen the series so far we have not used the authenticated users context throughout the application what i did or typically what i like to do is first i address the business logic of the application and then i try to implement the rest of the authentication and scaffolding because somehow i feel that the authentication mechanism of laravel is so easy and so intuitive that it really doesn't take too much energy to do that so why don't we first attack the business logic of the application and then look at you know finishing touches in terms of user authentication login logout um, re registration and those kind of stuff so let's get started and see how i have created the entire mechanism of authentication in this doctor app to give you a demo what i am able to do at the minimum is okay i have this login form if i click save actually i should rename that to login what happened right so with that done i'm able to come to the dashboard but if i I'm logged out for some reason I will not be able to access the dashboard so that's what we are trying to look at what I have done in this code base so let's dive in to start with why don't we look at what all we have in the user table so if you see in this migration apart from the standard table columns that we get for the user table the only thing which i have added here is the role i don't expect one user to have more than one role so it made sense for me to add the role in the user table itself and i'm defaulting that to receptionist that's the only change i have made and because of that what i had to do was going to my user model fillable i have role in here okay obviously that means if I go to default data, which is my factory, right? Uh, sorry, the fee cedar. In that cedar, I added myself as a doctor, and I haven't created. I think I have created receptionist. Oh, sorry. So let me see. Let me go to that particular function. Right. In here, you can see that I am not passing the role because the default value is receptionist. Okay. So far, so good now let's clear everything else close all let's look at the web.php file because that's where we have the login okay now what i have done is let me see if i can show you right the login get route and the post route are the only two routes right now which are you know, kind of <coughs> behind uh, sorry not behind the auth middleware just everything what i have done is i have added within this group which has a middleware auth that's all that was required for me to make everything authentication based right so as i told you i mean the authentication is so easy with laravel that i was not really concerned about it when i was developing the business logic of my application so now let's focus on what we have done for the login so the first route which we have is the get route index file it is rendering a login page inertia thingy which means that we will have a login page dot tsx so inside resources js and then pages folder i have login page dot tsx okay it is also searching for the public js folder but you don't need to worry about that what we are concerned over here is this in here again functional components login page it doesn't take any prop as of now okay let's look at the render method we have a layout header content i added the layout and the header content everything because you know, the authenticated layout should ideally be di different from the guest layout because you you will have some menu items which are specific to an authenticated user so unnecessarily you will have a, a kind of if conditions inside the view which is really not required and 
more than that, I think my login page, which is this, right? The layout here was quite different. It doesn't have that sidebar and stuff. So I decided, you know, why don't we keep it like that? If we have more than one route, which is for guest and it is taking that layout, I will make that into a component as well. But for now it is there. So yes, layout, header, content, breadcrumb, these are standard stuff. And then I have row column and then like my typical style what i have done is i have created a form component the login form is a component in itself the page calls that particular form so let me go inside the form so again if you are not aware i typically have inside the js folder i have this forms folder inside the forms folder we already have a patient add form we now have a login form as well okay so let's look at what we are doing with the login form so the login form again a function component takes one parameter or one prop which is on finish which means the page controls what happens when the login form is submitted okay so if you see when i'm calling the login form i'm passing this function okay so let's see what is happening on the form again obviously we have this form dot use form so this is our form object I created an instance of the form. This is the component coming from Ant Design. Okay, the form object is passed over here. I have a name, initial value. Remember is true, that is fine. Layout, autocomplete is on. On finish, I call the function which is coming through the props. Okay, then pretty standard stuff, form item. We have email, okay, we have password. One beautiful thing about the form is this thing. So if you see, this is any typical password input field, right? And this is what I like about it. This is already given to you and it is very much required in almost most, most of our forms. I mean, generally all the clients tell us at the bare minimum, give that I button. So saves time, right? Okay, we have the button and all that stuff. So what we can understand over here is that when the form is submitted, this on finish is called with the values. So what is happening on on finish? This is the function. So on finish, we are calling inertia dot post route do login. So what is that? If you see, the get route is login, and the post route is do dot login. So we are calling do dot login, and we are passing email and password. Email is values dot email. Password is values dot password. That's what we are getting over here. Why? Because the form says name equals email and name equals password. So whatever is the form item name is available as values on the finish function. And that's what we are passing to the parent component, right? So a post call is made. So now let's look at what happens when the post request is made. Okay, what have we, what have we here? Again, this is not something which I have written on my own. What I typically do is go to the Laravel's documentation this code is given there. I mean, it is thought through and it makes sense to use it. So credentials equals request dot validate. The validation is happening over here. I'm, I'm expecting two fields, email and password. That's fine. There is an additional validation for the format of the string. It should be a valid email address. That's expected. Now, this is where we are checking for the credentials, the validity of the credentials rather. Auth dot attempt. If it passes, then we create the session and we redirect the user to the home page. Home page meaning our slash route. And if that doesn't happen, then we take the user back to the login page with the error the email provided, the provided credentials doesn't match our records. So pretty standard stuff, right? I mean, it's as simple as it can get. Anyways, it's login. But yes, that's how we have this functionality working where if I now type my email ID again, hit save, and I'm logged in, right? And everything related to the session and dropping the cookie is taken care when we are doing auth attempt. So yeah, that's about it, guys. That's how the authentication has been created for us. If you like this video, do click on the thumbs up icon and don't forget to subscribe to my channel.